So thank you, Sanjay, for the introduction. Thank you, organizers, for the invitation and for, um, for organizing the conference. I'm sorry to hear uh, that Beatrice was not able to um, come. Uh, OK, so uh, let me tell you a little bit about the plan uh, for uh, today, uh, for my talk. So I'll, uh, my goal is to get to the free boundary shoe process, which is um, some generalization of the original Shul process, which is a measure on sequences of partitions, but within the original it was a requirement that it starts from empty, then you build these um, partitions by adding certain strips, and then it, or adding or removing, and at the end you end up with an empty partition. Uh, for free boundary, we don't have that requirement, so these like boundaries can be uh, uh, any partitions at the end. So as I talk, I will first introduce this ordinary, the, the, the first Shure process, and I'll show some models where we can study Shure processes. And um, then I'll slowly converge to free boundary Shure process. I'll talk about symmetric Shure process, which is essentially uh, one free boundary while the other one is, uh, remains empty again. Um, so at the very end, I'll get to the free boundary issue process. So I'll talk a little bit about how we were able to obtain the, the correlation function and get some asymptotic results. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see how um, it goes. And this is a work I've done over years with uh, my collaborators. So the, what I will be talking about, among other results that belong to others, there will be also something that... Uh, done in collaboration with uh, Cedric, who's here, and Jean Yang, uh, who gave a talk uh, before. And then there are also uh, three others, Dan, uh, Jeremy, and Peter. They are uh, actually ones with whom I worked on the free boundary issue process. OK. So, um, so I said I'll talk about this like original issue process and then some models. Um, so we have a sure process as a measure on uh, sequences of uh, partitions, but this part, so the, what we have is, let me see where this is. So what we have are these uh, like different ways to write a partition. So either like a represent as a young diagram or this particle whole configuration known as Maya diagram. Yeah? And for sure process, we need that the sequence of partition interlace. So what that means is, like when we superpose these two partitions, then they differ by a strip. And it can be either horizontal strip, like this, or vertical strip. And then we say these interlace, and I'll use this symbol. And then sometimes people refer to this one like a dual interlacing, so when they differ by a vertical strip. So for the short process, we have a word, like so this is like interlacing word. That's a parameter of the short process, so that's fixed. And then short process is a measure on all sequences that follow this particular uh, uh, interlacing word. So that, you know, if we have, um, you know, plus, plus, like, uh, you know, maybe we have, like, uh, add horizontal. You'll see the examples. Maybe I don't have to do it now. So, um, and so what ha then what is the, the probability on it? So we have these sequences that follow this fixed word, and then we have additional parameters, which are just some non-negative uh, uh, real numbers. And uh, each time when we move from one partition to another, like in the sequence, they differ by a strip. And then we collect this weight, which can be the same throughout for all, but we could also say it depends on, on where in the sequence we are. So it's zi to the number of uh, uh, boxes in the strip, or, or simply the difference of the number of boxes in lambda i and lambda i of minus 1. And so this is not the most general form um, of the Shure process, and it doesn't explain the name, yeah, but uh, this is called Shure process because this one can be replaced by a more general function, essentially a, a Shure function uh, depending on the skew shape. And for one particular specialization, we get this kind of weight. 
And what has been uh, studied extensively uh, is this kind of a measure on a uh, short process where we look at the Q to the volume, which is uh, simply Q to the number of boxes in all of these uh, partitions. And that's possible to obtain by choosing these ZIs in a special way. Uh, OK, so the classical model for short process are uh, plane partitions. And the, the way I kind of drew them, they're more like a reverse plane partition, but one can look from this corner. And then along diagonals, we have these ordinary partitions. And if we pay close attention, they interlace. So what we have, we have from empty, we add to get this one, a horizontal strip, and then we add another horizontal strip to get this one, and then another horizontal strip to get this one. And then we start removing. Eventually, we have to remove four of the strips to get to the empty. So this particular example corresponds like the sequence corresponds to this interla interlacing word. So where we add three horizontal strips and then remove uh, four. And then we can do this in more like a general, on more of a general model where we cut the corners, like some shape out of it, like uh, here. And then this shape actually dictates the word. So uh, we, we have here that we're starting with empty. We have to make three additions of horizontal strip, then remove two, then add two, remove two to get to the empty again. So empty here, empty here, and then you know, adding or removing. And then this looks like um, this in 3D. Okay. So another model that has been studied uh, in the short context is the elastic diamond that has been mentioned by Eric and um, Thomas, somewhere, OK. Uh, and um, so uh, what's, you know, how do we see that as an interlacing uh, sequence of partitions? Well, there is a way to put particles and holes uh, in, uh, on these domino tilings. And then when we read these particles and holes, like diagonally again, these are Maya diagrams of some partitions. And we can verify that they have to interlace in the following way. So we add, remove, add, remove, but we alternate between horizontal and vertical strips. So that's an Aztec diamond. Uh, so then we can you know, study it also as a short process, because it's, it can be seen as a sequence of, um, of partitions. Okay. So could you explain this again? How, what uh, is the statement? So, uh, so um, so there is a way to put particles and holes here. Okay, so I'll show you uh, later. I don't have this drawing uh, here, but I'll show you on steep tilings there is a way to add to a domino tiling particles and holes. And then when you look at these diagonals, each is a Maya diagram, and that's like some partition. So you have these sequences. So like, so this is a partition. A Maya diagram, but can be read as a as a partition, and then uh, for Aztec diamond, these partitions differ like in one slice, like one step by a horizontal strip and another by vertical. So you add or remove. Okay, so that's for Aztec diamond. Uh, so let me go back. So this, these are pyramid partitions, which you get like you can think of this like this infinite stack here. And uh, then you can get some other pyramid partitions by removing blocks from it. And you, you're only allowed to remove from the top. You can't pull things from inside. Uh, so like if you remove a certain number of them, you can get something of this kind. And then when you look from the top, then this is the one like we started with. And this would be the one um, here. And so that's also a sequence of uh, interlacing partitions. Again, when you put this like particles and holes. So in this case, we still have like this alternating, um, let me think, um, uh, horizontal and vertical. So like this is like this and that. But we keep adding, 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 like the same as for plane partitions, and then removing, removing, removing. OK, but we keep alternating. And then these Aztec diamond pyramid partition can be generalized to 
what's known as steep tilings, and this is due to Boutia, Chapuy, and uh, Cortel. Um, so uh, what's different, you still have this alternating uh, horizontal and vertical uh, strips, but word can be arbitrary. It's not like for Aztec diamond we had we alternating between adding and removing. For pyramid, we were adding, 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 then removing, removing. And here, this can be arbitrary. And so this is kind of similar to skew shape uh, that we had, skew plane partition. So really, this word then uh, defines this shape where we, the dual interlacing is irrelevant. It's just like, do we add or remove, add, remove, and so on. And then when we have this uh, boundary, then we can construct some, some shape like this. This is what in Thomas was this like uh, wallpaper in the uh, hotel, yeah? Just there, I think this is called herringbone pattern that uh, for Aztec diamond was. So you have like always these V's like, <laughs> while here, you might have like asymmetrically herring bones, like you have like something longer and shorter and longer. And then for Aztec diamond, it would be just zigzags constantly, like one step uh, regular. So it's, it's a little bit different, but uh, it's the same idea. And then you can uh, have different tilings of this um, strip. Um, and they correspond to these interlacing uh, sequences of partitions. So I don't know if it's now clearer or not. <laughs> uh, um, so there are ways to put these. So there are kind of two kinds of dominoes, like that was in uh, uh, Thomas' uh, talk. So these are both horizontal, but they are of different kind, like depending on do they cover uh, black or white on the chessboard. Uh, uh, and uh, so for some you put holes, for some you put particles. And then you, you read, so then uh, you can, this would be uh, like you'll read how many ho uh, holes you have, depends on like are you reading from. So you have one, there is one hole and here is one hole, so this would be partition one, one, zero, for example. Um, so, yeah. Is there only one place, I mean, I look at the upper right diagram, right? So this one? The partition yeah. gives you that red line. I mean, the word gives you that red line. Yeah, above it's the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's uh, the same. But you, when you place uh, these, you have these partitions have charge Maya diagram. So you are going to place them so that this is, you know, like empty partition has like particles here and empty. Yeah. So they could choose one, uh, but they are all the same. Like repeat. Yeah. What do you repeat? I mean, yeah, they are periodic. There, this is here. You know, with the bounded. Much periodic. Uh, here it's the same, yeah? but then this one is Shifted. on the uh, kind of reflected, yeah, like. Okay. Maybe to clarify, so the word you fix it in advance, the word W. Yes. Before so the, that, yeah. or the random process is playing out. It, it's fixed, yes. It's fixed. Okay. So different combinatorics arises from different types of words, basically. Yes, yes. Right. Well, once you fix the word, then there's, a, there's still an infinite number of patterns, but you put some cue in there, or what? Does it have a tiling with that word? Yeah, so there are infinite number of tilings, and they are weighted differently, yeah? like you, uh, depending on. So this could be Q to the number of uh, flips that you have to do from the, uh, this is kind of the starting one, and then, depending on how many flips you make. Uh, uh, Each time when you add a horizontal strip, you do it with probability proportional. To Q, you can like Q you, to you the can flip this one. Yeah, like, so if right. you flip here, then it would be Q. And then you have op options to flip somewhere else and so on. But you don't have to necessarily give Q to the volume. Uh, you can just give, like so these are the slices. And you have Z1 to the number of boxes in the Maya diagram, Z2 to the number of boxes. So whether this is kind of natural completely in Aztec dime, you know, but this is, some of this was discussed in uh, uh, Thomas' work, you know, so, but he does have something that's not sure process, but uh, 
um, sum of uh, if you like in horizontal uh, you, you make them all the, the same then you get what, what uh, Thomas was talking about yeah but um, okay so um, uh, and then there is uh, maybe kind of true sure process model um, uh, because in the previous one we had uh, still these uh, uh, words had to alternate uh, like between uh, interlacing and dual interlacing uh, so for every even we uh, add horizontal or remove and here we uh, remove or add uh, vertical but if you don't want to have uh, this requirement then you can um, uh, there is a model called Rayliard graph that's due to Boutillier, Boutillier, <laughs> uh, Cortel and uh, uh, Sanjay uh, and uh, uh, which is on uh, on this uh, it's actually a diamond model on this uh, graph, and then uh, words can be uh, uh, really uh, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to give any asymptotic results for this kind of model, but you know definitely one can think about uh, this model. So maybe I'll, I'll move on with this. So uh, I'll now talk about some asymptotics result, and I mentioned, you know, already the names of people who have been working on this uh, problems with me. So, so this is uh, uh, these are just some pictures of sure process that are obtained uh, by a computer, but. Uh, uh, we can show these analytically, so I'll, di I'll discuss this uh, uh, as we go. So we, there are some pictures of Aztec diamonds, some plane partitions, and then also like some steep dialing um, examples. Okay, and um, so, you know, like pioneering work uh, of uh, this kind uh, came from uh, surf and the canyon and the Okunko Vrishitikin, in particular Okunko Vrishitikin studied it in, as a sure process. So what we have here is, um, so there's no dual interlacing, these are plain partition on here and those are unbounded. And over here this is a skew, uh, a skew um, plain partition but it's also bounded um, on, on the ends. Uh, and these uh, were studied in the sure process context by Okunko and Rishitiki, so that's the, they're kind of you know, the original ideas of, of, of these, you know, the, what we are, I'm going to talk about comes from, from their work. And they also like had later papers where they studied uh, edge asymptotics and you know, like some, some interesting point like uh, cusps uh, that appear uh, here. And so let me show you uh, how this looks like for pyramid partitions. So I have two similar uh, figures from, you know, similar to the one I showed you before, but in the case of, um, that, that was for plane partitions. So here we have dual interlacing, and we have, um, so this is a, a limit shape of the pyramid uh, partition, or, or I, maybe I should say frozen boundary. Um, and uh, this one is the pyramid partition of finite width. Um, so, uh, um, and just sometimes people get confused because when they think the pyramid partition, they always think like of this base, um, like a square. But essentially, we are looking at these diagonal words, uh, the, they, sorry, diagonal uh, sequences. So we only fix width in this direction, but uh, you can remove blocks all the way, you know, like to, uh, on this end. So it's just fixed in, in the number of um, um, partitions in the sequence. It's not fixed, I mean, you, you let it go to infinity, but you scale it always with the, the mesh size, yeah, like the, the kind of, so that's, so that, you know, you have finite width at the end. Um, 
And so this, like the pictures that I showed you, well, they can be analytically written down what they exactly are. So again, it's you know something we've seen today. So there is uh, some uh, like correlation kernel, you know, expressed in this way, and the frozen bound that is determined by the double critical points. And this can be rewritten in terms of this like uh, function f, uh, and uh, which which is given here. And we, this is the f function for the uh, unbounded pyramid partition. So we have a way of describing uh, that frozen um, boundary. Um, and um, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I, I can show you also um, how this looks uh, when we have um, some more general situations. So uh, what I showed you is um, is uh, this one. I showed you half of uh, the previous. I showed you the whole one. This is just the half of this, uh, and uh, uh, that one corresponds when our pyramid partition is, you know, the number we add uh, and the number of removed strips is the same. If we make a disbalance, then the shape kind of gets a little bit, uh, you know, like different skewed, yeah? Um, and uh, what happens if we have uh, steep tiling? So if we uh, maybe have blocks of like we are adding and then removing and adding and removing, so it's now like a skew shape version of, uh, uh, skew plane partition version, but with the dual interlacing, then we see uh, frozen boundaries of this kind, um, and we can show that in the bulk there is the incomplete beta kernel, which is you know, the generalization of the sine kernel. So we essentially see all these universal processes that you know, show, show up with, um, uh, you know, when we talk about sure process. So we have the, the sine kernel or this incomplete beta kernel here. Uh, on here we have the airy process on the uh, boundary, and then we have these cusps that come from the triple critical points, and then there are two kinds. Um, so over here, like if we draw this bottom portion, then we will have frozen region, but we will have uh, two different uh, Domino tilings will have this, like I think it was called, it was drawn green and the, um, orange on, on um, my uh, figure there. And the same thing happens here. We have two kinds, and that corresponds to Casperi process. And we have also these kind where we don't have these two different kinds uh, uh, of frozen regions, and these are then like correspond to Piercy process. And then we also have these turning points, which correspond to GUE, minor process. OK, so that's um, uh, for the uh, pyramid partitions and steep tilings. And uh, let's talk about uh, a little bit about, Arctic, uh, about the Aztec diamond. But Thomas already said more than I will say, so let me just go through these slides quickly. So this is the uniform model, and this is the one where we prefer horizontal, uh, we give higher weight to horizontal versus um, the uh, vertical. Um, uh, and then we can also have some what I call here periodic weights, but they are not like they might seem like I have two pe two different periods, but it's uh, I have to say that what Thomas said was more general than what I have here. This can be in his context considered like a six uh, periodic uh, short process. So it's all in the vertical, but there are two periods. One is for those horizontal strip, one for um, vertical strips. So that's what what these A's and B's are, and then we have. Uh, uh, we don't encounter, in this case, the smooth region. Uh, we have rough regions, 
we have frozen regions, and then we have, like this was also mentioned, like these are frozen, but they alternate the colors. Yeah? The, uh, we see cusps, so like there are two cusps here, and then they collide in this case, and so on. So let me just explain how one can analyze uh, this. Well, again, you know, there is the asymptotics is determined now by some different S function, and that's, that function ex is explicit for, in terms of these uh, weights. And then, you know, like one can derive from this, you know, second, uh, uh, cr uh, the, the double critical point describes article, uh, Arctic curve, and, and so on. So one can uh, do some uh, analysis of this function to, to get the asymptotics. Okay, so um, so let me then move to the uh, uh, symmetric Schur process, uh, which is, you know, as I said, I'm I'm approaching this free boundary Schur process, um, and uh, um, uh, so this one is the case where we are still starting with an empty partition and we are adding. Um, horizontal strips, but then the end is free. There's no restriction to it, so it can be anything. Uh, so this would be this like one free boundary plane partition, or we can do and make a mirror image of this, and then uh, uh, we can talk about symmetric plane partition. So symmetric sure process or one free boundary, it's kind of the same, the same thing. Um, and um, so what kind of um, shape do we get? Well, it's not a surprise, I guess. We all, it's not uncommon in, in this kind of business is to get that this, is, this should be behaved the same as, uh, as non-symmetric uh, uh, case. Uh, so this like frozen boundary uh, looks the same as as in, uh, but if you pay attention to what's inside, it has to be symmetric. It is like a, which is again comes from the model, and this is uh, symmetric uh, with the bounded width, um, and um, so the asymptotics is is kind of you know like. Similar, so the amoeba is the same. We have we can ex describe the, uh, the the curve. We can say exactly um, uh, what are the uh, the height of the uh, symmetric uh, func plane partition, and this is all done by uh, looking at the limit of the correlation kernel of the symmetric short process. And so the only different part is, so if we are here, this is going to be like, behave like the regular, uh, like the, 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 the Incomplete, in, but I meant for the standard, uh, sure, uh, for non-symmetric, uh, sure, uh, yeah, the non-symmetric sure process. But there is this line, which is, you know, there is a, uh, it's, that be, looks a little bit different, and then that's described by a Fafian instead of a determinant. So symmetric sure process, maybe I should have said that's like, uh, it, it's Fafian, it's not determinantal, but like here in the bulk, it's going to reduce to determinate except on this diagonal where we, it remains to be um, uh, a Fafian. And uh, without this, this is this incomplete beta kernel. So we have some extension of it uh, to Fafian uh, uh, kernels. Okay. Um, then, uh, um, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, symmetric, another symmetric uh, sure process. So there are several ways to, to see that, that model. So one is to talk about strict plane partitions. So 
for plane partition, we just require here non-increasing numbers, yeah? But for strict, we can say it has to strictly increase. And uh, then we can represent this with this point configuration. So we don't have to use the Maya diagram that, that I showed you before. We can you know, use the one that are, you know, can work with strict partition because particles do not repeat. So that's like we don't have to, uh, Maya diagrams are unbounded on both and they, these are only on, on one end. Uh, so for strict we don't need, um, you know, this unboundness on both ends. And so that's one model. But there is a way to think about this model either through non-intersecting paths um, or like plane over partitions. Uh, so one, there is a way to put maybe my, you know, this, this is the same. Uh, I thought maybe for a second that these are not the same. They're the same. So there is a way to put, um, um, they're not, no, these are not, no. It's not, it's not, <laughs> because I'm looking where are these four. No, it's not, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's not the same, it's not a big deal, but there is a way to put uh, some overlines on, on this, so this can be also uh, studied as a, what's known as plane over partitions. Um, and uh, with these overlines, we can read uh, a sequence of partitions. So essentially, like we start with empty, then this one would be one, then this is a young diagram of two. This should be three, three, one, yes, that's, that works. And so on, so there is a way to build a sequence of partitions, and if we pay attention, how, what happens if they have to interlace again, like in this like alternate pattern. Um, like regular dual, regular dual, and so on. And uh, yes? How to understand these overlines in terms of the partition interlacement? Uh, like you just uh, kind of uh, rearrange the numbers in your usual way. So four is greater than three, but you can also put that four is greater than four prime. And then you read the large, or, you know, the entries of with four. And then you read the next entries for four prime. So that's this two. So is it like saying that the four bar is like three point five? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you read. You kind of slice it, and then you have these partitions and uh, read. Um, um, and uh, so this is over. <laughs> but they. Um, I don't know. There are other ones. I'm not sure how it's called as well. You can better there with the primes. There are the, they, they have uh, people use them. I'm not sure. Super partitions? Uh, I don't know if it's a super. Why don't you see 3.5 with the four bar? And I'm applying it in the Because you write a four instead of the 3.5 in the partition, I think. Oh, but you can't put uh, arbitrary. So these overlines can only appear. Uh, at the end, uh, so like in this row, they appear at the end. Um, and I think uh, in column, they can appear multiple times. So like, uh, here you, uh, but it's, there is, they'll essentially in this border strip there is, you can't put uh, overlines here. And that corresponds I, and unfortunately, again, this is not uh, good, uh, but uh, uh, you, can, some, you, you can, uh, like here, you wouldn't be able to use this uh, intersecting path, uh, this path, but here you have a choice to go either this or diagonally, and that's where you can put also overlines. Um, you're not happy, but... Uh, some rules. There's some rules there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the bars have to be, have to form vertical strip. 
three bars can form a vertical, can be on top of each other. And the things without bars have to form horizontal strips. Oh, I see. So you, can't, right. you can't just put three. And moreover, <laughs> there, is a, there is an involution, like there is a bijection. You can switch the vertical and the horizontal. So in that sense, the order between three and three bar doesn't matter. Yeah. Because like that, those five guys that where three is written, you can uniquely write, split them into a vertical first and then a horizontal. The, the bars form vertical strips and the non-bars form horizontal strips. Yes. Oh, sorry. That's what I said. That's what you said. Yeah. Okay. That means, okay. There's some rules. There are some rules, yes. You can't uh, do it. It's not like, yeah, you call it four and a three and a half and you can fill it anywhere, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but, you know, like there are different models, but in, you know, like co connecting to what we've discussed previously, this is a half of a pyramid uh, partition, you yeah? know? This is free boundary pyramid partition, essentially, yeah? Uh, and uh, so the asymptotics of it, I'm showing you two pictures. So this one is like a half of the pyramid, and this one is uh, um, shown as a strict partition. Uh, and the amoeba is the one we saw today, is the one that appears with domino tilings of astic damage. So it's this one. Um, and we have a similar situation as before. So this is a Fafian process, but in the limit, it's going to be determinantal. But on this one, that's where we have this free boundary, it's going to remain Fafian. Um, or in this case, it's here. Um, and again, this is you know like extension of the sine kernel. And we, you know this was mentioned also. These fluctuations are expected, and we we are show we show that it's a Gaussian you know given by Gaussian free field. And so let me then say something about three boundary short process. So. Um, so what we have in this case is we don't have to start. We are not starting. Not that we don't have. To, we don't start with empty partitions here and uh, at the end and uh, start at the end and then and then we still have a word. Okay. So now I'm switching and I'm saying this word has to be of particular, you know, like look in particular way. But with specialization, we can do you know like be general uh, again. If I want to get rid of, of you know, removing, I can make this to be the equal. So I can you know, just be adding. Or if I want dual interlacing, I can choose dual specializations here. And you know, I, I'll, I'll be able to get whatever I said before. So it's really generalization. And it's generalization is that we now have these end partitions free. And in addition to this sure, measure we have the, the, you know, from before, we, we weight uh, initial partitions. Um, and I can skip the rest, I explained this. And then, uh, so how do we then get the original true process? Well, if we put u and v to be zero, then this forces these to be empty partitions. So we get recover the original one. Um, if we put u equals one, and the other one zero, then we get the symmetric. And periodic would be if we have a restriction that mu naught and mu n uh, is uh, zero. Uh, not sorry, that mu naught is equal to mu, mu n. Um, and then you know, there's some requirements on u to make this measure finite. So one has to assume that u by absolute value is less than, by module is less than one. And, um, uh, and then we have no restriction. That's free boundary short process. Okay. I'm so sure. what is the rho, rho k plus and the rho sub k? Plus? Okay. So these are sure, symmetric sure functions, and uh, so in uh, like these are algebra specialization uh, of like uh, uh, 
homomorphism of this is like a basis, so you can map this uh, uh, to real numbers, positive real numbers, using uh, homomorphism from symmetric functions to real numbers. So rho, rho k plus is a collection of real numbers? So, uh, so these are some ways that you want. Um, so in the previous one, you can uh, say, so you know, let's not forget about special zero. We can just say these are symmetric functions, so they depend on infinitely many uh, variables. I can set x2 and so on to be zero, keep x1. This is how sure function looks like. And that's exactly this measure that, we, that I showed at the beginning. But you can do uh, different things. So among other things, you can choose this one to force that these two interlace in a dual fashion. Like in the one, so you can do, you can construct different measures and you can construct something that I haven't shown here, like that, that's also been Poncherelle measures uh, and so on. So yeah, by omega and then you specialize. That's yeah, okay. yeah, so yeah, so you, it's, so this is pretty general class of uh, measures, yeah, because of this. Uh, um, okay, so these are, and these are parameters and then they, you know, like impose what kind of, you know, what has to be true for these uh, uh, consecutive part, uh, partitions. Um, and so the, what we want then to do is we want to study the asymptotics for this and this is, you know, like the way to go is to find the correlation function. And uh, of course this is harder. Um, and as it turns out to be like the previous one I showed you, the original one and the symmetric shoe, they are the first one is determinantal, the other one is Fafian. So there is some nice way to write correlation function as a Fafian of one function of what of kernel. Yeah, for Fafian you maybe you have three, yeah, but uh, it's still one function that you need to analyze or or three functions to add in the symptomatic analysis. Uh, and uh, so that, that's really great when you have that. Uh, and this is neither Fafian or, or sure or, or determinantal. So what we uh, did, we uh, did something that's analogous to idea of Borodin. When he studied periodic sure process, he introduced like some shift mix. So what is that? Well, so these are three, these partitions. But you also want to allow uh, to introduce these Maya diagrams. So you, what Rick was asking, uh, you know, that yellow and green. The, so there is a place where you're putting empty partition. There is a charge where you're going to tie partition. You know, it depends where, how you shift these, like this sequence of whole particles and whole. And if you allow all of them, then you have some more general, you don't have just partition, but you have like what's called charge partitions. So we allow charged partitions and uh, we weigh them with some additional parameter and that's called shift mix uh, sure process. And that one is a Fafian process. We can show that's a Fafian process. And um, so I'm putting some things, you know, like I'll show you what Fs look like and what these expectations are. But this is what I said. We have some, we are doing this in the Fox space formalism. And um, so there is additional parameter T. This is like this weighs these you know, charges it, uh, uh, for these Maya diagrams. Um, and then we write this all in this Fox space formalism and then there are some commutation relations and these will come from sh commutation of sure functions, the Cauchy type identities. And we also have something uh, coming from Littlewood because when you have empty partition, then you just end, uh, end the process. But with here, you have to kind of do the ping pong. And so you'll have some like Littlewood identities there. Um, and then you are left something that comes really you know, the, this does not show up with partition function. This is really, you know, shows up in the correlation function. So you have these expectations. And this generalized 
three boundaries. So we, it, you know, we sum over all of them, but we can write them as some operator applied to empty partition, and then that allows us to get some weak type formula and so on. So it it takes some time to explain. Uh, uh, well, it's we make it with with uh, with this generalized state. And uh, maybe I, I don't, I have sometimes, I'm not sure if you're asking as a physicist or something, then I always feel like I don't know what to <laughs> answer. Well, is there some uh, anti-commutation that's here, which is what you would expect for Fermi? It, because this is uh, possible with this generalized state. Uh, why are they not bosonic, let me ask. Again, I feel like I always <laughs> don't know what to. Uh, Somehow it should be like non intersecting lattice paths with fermionic, because of, I guess what they know, there's a determinant. It's a Fafian. symbols properly. There's a Fafian. This is Fafian. Fafian yeah. is like a determinant, which is like an antecedent. Okay. So. Maybe uh, I, I need someone to help me with when people ask like this. I'm not sure really uh, um, what kind of, like I feel like it's some kind of metaphysical, which why it works. I don't know. It works, but um, we can show these <laughs> uh, uh, commutations, therefore. Uh, uh, we we knew what we kind of wanted, so this uh, the, you know what what we want to get for the Fafian. So we we made these states so that it um, we, we gained this, but I, I I don't know really how to answer this. Can you explain what this notation means? What's the big bracket? Is it two by two matrix? Oh, this is two by two matrix. Yeah, the cur this is the correlation curl. Yeah. Um, and the brackets inside mean that that coefficient. This is the coefficient, yes. Of of some. Oh, oh yeah. So I'll I'll show you the the function. It's anti symmetric and V uh, V and W or, or not? Yeah, these are anti symmetric. Z and W. Yeah. And, and, w. Yep. Huh. and um, so these S they depend on products of. Um, uh, generating function of complete uh, symmetric, uh, hom homogeneous symmetric functions. And uh, uh, these expectations, they have these product of Poshheimer symbols, essentially. Okay, so these are all these elliptic functions that can be written in, in the product of Poshheimer symbol. So it's not the easiest work, uh, thing to work with if you want to study asymptotic analysis, but we were able to obtain some uh, results, uh, both in bulk and edge. So I don't think I have time, but sure processes also can be studied on a model that's like that this growth diagram models that comes from Robinson Shested algorithm and then there is some LPP times and so on. So we study those, but let me just say for the bulk and I, I, I feel I don't have the time to explain exactly the weights, but in any case what I wrote here is a special case of something that we can prove more generally. So I just wanted to show you, show you, uh, you the, how the bulk looks like for some special um, uh, choice of rows. Uh, although this could be, as I said, written for more general uh, specializations. And, um, and what we have here is some like kernel that interpolates between a uniform measure and this Poissonized Plancherel measure. Um, which gives us the sine kernel. So if you put gamma to infinity, you will get um, a sine kernel. And we have, for this growth model, we have some also 
kernels that interpolate between some, some kernels that are known from before, and then we get what we think is some, are some new, <laughs> this interpolating kernels in the limit in between Tracy with them. Yes? Sorry, but uh, you mean uniform? Uniform is not quite determinantal, so, so you mean on the edge, right? Uh, so this, is, this is the edge of, the, of a random partition. And so when you get uniform measure, it's the edge of a uniform measure. Is that right? Uh, when, uh, so all... So these are the, sorry, I mean, these are bulk limits of the... So this one is, uh, this is not about, this one is not. Right, but bef before, before it was. Before? Yeah. Uh, so you get a uniform uh, on... What is the kernel for the uniform measure, right? It's, it should be like the identity operator, right? Like uh, it should be this one, yeah? That's a, that's a number. So it look, looks like the kernel is an identity operator. Uh, so, uh, when, uh, when gamma, uh, uh, you should have, um, Uh, only uh, uniform on the one slice. And that's probably what you meant by edge, yeah? Yeah. So, and I think that ends my talk. <laughs>